It is Tuesday, which of course means it's time to answer the questions that you guys send in every single week on the Brendan Plays forums at brendanplays.com forward slash forums or in the YouTube comment section down below. You can also leave a voicemail on brendanplays.com by clicking the voicemail button on the right hand side of the page, the big green button. Alrighty, so before we get into today's show, I just want to give my quick condolences to all that have been affected by the recent terrorist attacks. It's been devastating to hear. You know, it's been covered like every single hour, it seems as though, in Australia. So it's a huge story all around the world. So I'm definitely uh, devastated to hear about what's been going on. And just my condolences to any of those who have been affected by any of the attacks. I know there was a number of them, not just the one in Paris. So if that's been you, I, you know, I'm sorry to hear. But uh, I guess it just sucks that we have these type of people in our world, you know, it's, it, we don't want to live in fear, that's the thing, like, you want to live a happy and loving life, but when people like this, you know, you never know, you, you could be next, that's the thing, like, who would have thought, but um, hopefully things get sorted out, I just, I, I don't know, I just fear that we might have a war in our hands or something like that, something crazy is going to go down, so hopefully that isn't the case. Not much crazy has been going down in this week in WWE. A uh, pretty standard week as we build towards the Survivor Series pay-per-view. Not a lot to really boast about, but we will talk about the full Survivor Series card this week, giving my full predictions on what I think is going to happen, especially with this tournament that's going on. Obviously, that's the big talking point of Survivor Series. So we'll talk about the tournament later on, and we'll uh, kind of give my thoughts and predictions on what I think will happen, and maybe even talk about some of the things I would have liked to have seen happen in this tournament. So we'll talk more about that later. Plus all the other matches, I think there's the Brothers of, Brothers of Destruction versus the Whites, for example, and the Page and Charlotte. I mean, that last segment on Raw, we've, we'll talk about that later, but man, that was uh, not pretty. So <laughs> so we'll talk about Raw and everything like that and a couple other news tidbits as well. Before we get into all of that, though, I guess the opening segment on the show, I think, is going to be... From now on, probably dedicated to saying, you know, what's going on with me? You know, what am I doing? You know, how am I feeling? That's kind of like my own little segment of the show. So I know a lot of people have been kind of criticizing that. But, you know, like I said last week, I went on a bit of a rant. But uh, I don't really care. But so just just on that note, a lot of people are kind of wanting me to um, do timestamps on the podcast. And I get that. I get why people want me to do that. But the thing is, is that um, I don't really want you guys to skip any portion of the show. I, I make the podcast for you to listen to the whole show, so I don't really want to promote and give you the opportunity to skip over 30 minutes of the show, because I want you to listen to it all, so I'm not going to really do that. I encourage you to listen to the whole show. I get it that you might not be interested in some of the things I'm saying, but you know you can skip ahead if you want, but I just don't want to make it easy for you to skip over 20 per- you know, 20% of the show, just because you may not be, you know, you may just want to hear me talk about Raw, but you know, that's just the way I kind of feel about it, so I do apologize if you're kind of one of those people who want to do timestamps, I get that all the time in the comments, not going to happen, because it's, for me, I just want you to listen to the whole damn thing, so, maybe I'm selfish, maybe I'm not, I don't know, but um, this week we had the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, which went live on Sunday afternoon, it was 5.30am in the morning, well, am morning, 5.30am for me when it went live, so I had to do a bit of a all night, I suppose. I didn't go stay up the whole time. I went to bed at about two o'clock, and I had about two, nearly two, three hours sleep, and then woke back up again. But so I was a bit of a zombie. Um, but things worked out really well. Last time we did it at WrestleMania, it was a bit of a disaster. Let's be let's be honest. We had a number of issues. This time, everything was pretty smooth. Everything was pretty good. The only real issue that we had is that it kind of cut out for three seconds. Uh, Whilst the whilst the Daniel Bryan and Sheamus match was happening, and some people missed the finish of the match, some people did it, some people did miss it. But the thing is, like, I don't know what's going on, but every time I stream after like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, it's kind of random now. But the opening portion of the stream, it'll cut out once, and you'll have to refresh and it's tr- straight back on. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why it's doing that, but that happened again. Um, unfortunately, but uh, other than that, everything went pretty sweet. We had about 300 viewers, 250 to 300 viewers for majority of the show, which was fantastic. A lot more than what I expected. Honestly, I was expecting maybe 100 viewers, to be fair, because I didn't really hype it up last time. Last For WrestleMania, I was like, it's happening this, happening this time, you be there, this, this, this. I kept, you know, hammering it down. This time, I was just like, uh, yeah, Extreme Rules is going to happen in nine hours, so I hope to see you there. So I didn't really, I didn't upload a video about it, I didn't really hype it up all that much, so we still had, 
well, if not more viewers on it. Maybe I was streaming on Twitch. That was why we had more viewers. I'm not sure. But overall, it was a, a great success. Everything was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I was, like I said, I was half asleep whilst I was streaming it, so I wasn't really interacting much for the first hour until I kind of kicked into gear a little bit. I was playing Fallout 4 anyways um, whilst it was on just to kind of keep me awake and keep me busy. Um, yeah, but I was well, playing Fallout 4 very badly, though, trust me. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, I think overall I think everything went pretty good. None of the matches kind of screwed up too much. I had a few audio and video problems whilst recording it. Um, my, I don't know, my game capture, this new one I got, it's just, the Elgato to me has never been friendly. It's always, always just messing up all the time. I don't know. Elgato and me, we don't have a, we have a love-hate relationship. Sometimes it's fantastic, sometimes it's absolutely pain in the ass. So, once again, I've had some issues, and once again, I had some issues today when I tried to record the next episode of Universe Mode some more issues there so it just kind of adds to the length of time that it takes these videos to get a lot of people kind of wonder why haven't you been doing videos this week why is it taking so long to get papers done uh you look at guys i'm going to name some names you look at guys like dank ops and goran perkins they do you know universe mode and my career mode every single day why can't you do that it's because i have these issues i have these problems that i run into all the time and i don't know what's going on i just need to kind of fix that and also, like, it's again, you know, YouTube isn't my full-time job. I've got uh, a lot of things going on this week. I had two exams last week. I've got an exam tomorrow. I do finish college or uni, university tomorrow. It's my last day for the year. So I will have a, a break up until the beginning of March. So what's that? Three months, nearly three and a half month break. So I'm going to have a lot of time in my hands because I don't have a job at all. Um, I'm a student, so I don't have a job, so I'm going to have a lot of time to do YouTube and do my work on my forums, work on my website, try and grow the channel, which is why a lot of people have been like, oh man, why aren't you doing these videos, why aren't you working on your channel, why aren't you you know, grinding hard now, it's because in the next three months, I'm going to be doing a lot of time to my channel and trying to you know, get the best quality videos out that I can and make videos all the time, so I'm going to have a lot of time to do that, so I needed to kind of you know, sort myself out before I get to that point because I've had some other things I've got going on. So um, these exams, these assignments I've had kind of kept me tied down a little bit and just played in the back of my mind a bit. And also this week, I'm going to be honest, I didn't feel like making videos because I had Fallout 4. I was so just endured into that game, I just couldn't stop playing it. I don't know, it's just so good. <laughs> Fallout 4 is incredible. I think I've got like 40 hours already in the game. I've just been playing the living shit out of it. But the problem with Fallout is that I couldn't believe my luck. This week, I must be incredibly unlucky. We've got Black Ops out, Fallout's out, Star Wars, is, I'm, about, I'm about to get that. And not one, but both of my PS4 controllers broke this week, just randomly. You know, last week, to be honest, my one of my controllers broke. So in the last week, both my controllers are broken. One of them, the analog stick, isn't working properly, so... It will make it'll move me backwards, and I try and move forwards. It doesn't move. I have to kind of press it down really hard for it to do anything. It's just it's impossible. You can't use it only on games that don't really require you to use the left analog stick to move around. You know, if you don't really use that stick, then you're fine. And my other control, the R2 button, is officially decided to break and shit itself. So that has made life very difficult as well because the R2 button on obviously on Call of Duty and Fallout is the shooting button. So I haven't been able to shoot. I've changed the button, remapped the buttons around, so I have been able to play. But yeah, I'm gonna have to get myself another controller, at least one more. So that'll be some more money down the drain this week. And to be honest, the PS4 controllers are so badly made that I'm not real surprised that it's only lasted me two years. So it's kind of annoying, but um, not one, but two, both breaking in the same week. That is, that is, that sucks. <laughs> that just sucks so much. But um, that's kind of impacted my, my gaming this week, which has been a lot. I'm, I've got the time now to really game again. I haven't really been able to kind of devote hours and hours to a game and really try go for Platinums, which is, if you've been following, you know, probably not most of you don't, but my second channel, Brendan's Platinums is a channel where I upload my Platinum videos. So I'm a big trophy hunter on the PS4. So I like to upload you know, videos of me getting my Platinum trophies just for fun and just for my own personal kind of thing. So I haven't been getting any Platinums because I just haven't had the time because it's just kind of been devoted to videos and then devoted to um, college work and uni work, whatever. 
So when I've had, you know, spare time, you know, I've only really been playing casual games. I've been playing, you know, your FIFAs, your NBAs. I've been really been playing your Witcher 3s, you know, these other games like that I really want to kind of in, endorse so much of my time into. So I haven't really been able to do that. So it's good to have a bit of a break. And the only problem with that is, is that this weekend I'm moving out. So I have to pack my whole room up, which is not a lot. It'll only take me a you know, half a day to kind of do all that. So I have to pack and clean my whole room, um, and I have to move out. So I have to drive five and a half hours to go home. And on Saturday, I'll be doing that. I'll be staying at my girlfriend's place for a couple of days. So on Tuesday, I'll be moving out. So next week's um, podcast, I'm not sure what's going to go on there. I'm going to have some things that's going to be kind of making, you know, might be a bit later than normal. I'm not sure. I'm going to try and get it out on time. But um It's going to be a bit of a pain because, you know, obviously in the morning on Tuesday, I'll be driving five and a half hours home and then I've got to watch a three hour raw when I get home and unpack all my things and kind of, yeah, so it's going to be a a rough one next Tuesday. So it might be a little bit more of a a tired version of, of the podcast next week, but we'll try and turn it up. Obviously next week, there'll be a full recap of Survivor Series. So there's no way I'm going to be missing that. And I hate to miss podcasts anyway. It drives me nuts when I when I miss it. It's, to me, it's better late than never. So I'm definitely um, going to be getting them out. So yeah, but other than that, not a lot really going on. I mean, that's quite a lot going on. Honestly, I'm moving out. So uh, I have been apartment hunting as well, or you know, a unit that I should say. So a little one bedroom place for me for next year. So I'm, I have been looking around and trying to get a few of those sorted out for next year because I'm moving out. If you didn't know, I live on uh, on campus college, so um, it's not as exciting as you think. I honestly I hate it. So uh, I'm moving out next year and getting my own place. So which is going to just better my channel as well. But um, yeah, so that's kind of the plan right now. I'm kind of looking around and, and trying to get some a new place together. So been looking at a few of those as well so it's kind of exciting a bit of an exciting exciting transition in my life at the moment but um yeah so the next three months or so i'll be back home just kind of chilling out and um finding out what's the next move for me i haven't finished college yet and entirely I have one more year to go and probably a year and a half to be honest uh i did fail a few courses <laughs> but um yeah so probably a year and a half left of college but um yeah so it's kind of it's on track, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what, what's going on in the future. But uh, other than that, I mean, like I said, not much going on. Extreme Rules is great. I'm pretty happy with the success of it. I think most people really enjoyed it, which is fantastic. So I'm going to be getting back on the video grind in the next couple of weeks. So things might be still a bit hectic in the next week or so because I'm moving out. Uh, I'll have to try and get a few videos ready to go for the weekend. But, um, yeah, so I want to get the NBA back. I know the GM mode has been non-existent. I need to sort that out. I need to get a new capture card. The, the one that I used to record, the PS2, is officially fried. I tried it again yesterday. It's officially done. So I need to try and get a replacement of that, or I have to shell out another $200 to buy a completely new one, even though I've only had it for four months. So it's been dreadful. You know, I haven't, I haven't had any luck at all with capture cards. I don't know. But um, so that's a few things I got to sort out. So I want to bring back the NBA. I know I've kind of neglected that, but I kind of you guys already knew that. If you have enjoyed the NBA stuff, you kind of knew that that when 2K16 is going to drop the WWE, that uh, I would be focusing on that for a few weeks at least, and if not a month. So that's what happened. All the, that's what happens all the time with the GMO and stuff. I got to focus on the new game, and then once that kind of dies down, and cools down a little bit then we can uh, focus on the other things. I did do a Fallout video today as well. I don't know if you guys checked that one out. I did say I was going to do that last week. I got around to doing it on the weekend, and I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was a little funny. Well, not, I mean, it was a humorous little little thing I put together. I mean, it could have been better, but I was pretty happy with it. Um, you know, I put a lot of work into kind of creating my little house. So I kind of um, showed it off in a lighthearted way. So if you want to go check that out, make sure you do. It's on the channel, on the main channel. So that, I thought that was pretty cool and pretty neat. So go check that one out. And other than that, really no more news to kind of cover. So I guess I'll stop rambling on. And all you guys that are here to listen to about Raw and everything like that, we'll, uh, we'll go through it. So this week's Monday Night Raw, we, we kicked it off, I should say, with the Brothers of Destruction and the White Family little confrontation there, which was uh, very cool. I actually liked that one. And uh, Still no announcement on who's going to be the two representing the Wyatt family. For me, I think it'll be Bray and Braun. I think just Harp and Rowan are just jokes at this point. But I get the feeling... And saying that, I also have the, also have the feeling that um, Bray may not compete. I think they might, you know, just have Bray watch on and have these other guys kind of, you know, work the match instead. I'm not sure, but... 
you know, I personally hope that they do make an elimination match. I don't think they will at this point, which will mean that the card Survivor Series doesn't have your traditional, you know, Survivor Series match, which sucks because that's my favorite type of match that um, the WWE has. It's, I love it. You know, it's so exciting. Last year's Survivor Series match was great. I really, really enjoyed it. So I was hoping and hoping that they would do another one this year, which with the same kind of build. And it doesn't seem as doesn't seem as though they're going to do that. I honestly thought they probably should have done the Brothers of Destruction, team them up, and have the the Dudley Boys come along and help them out as well. Bit of an attitude era kind of a team to face the Wyatts, a four on four there. That was my initial kind of want rather than just a two-on-two or a two-on-four. But um, it seems as though they just want to do a two-on-two. I personally think if they had had the Dudley boys there, it could have taken a bit of stress off Taker and Kane as well. Well, not really Kane, he's fine, but more so the Undertaker to work a big portion of the match. So now it's really up to Kane to kind of work most of the match, and Taker can, you know, I I don't know. Taker might be good enough to kind of do his own, but um, I just, at least in my thought, I could have, you know, could have Undertaker come in and and, um, clear house a couple times and, and look really good and kind of save him towards the end of the match and have these other guys work the match more so, so you can kind of keep Taker in the in the tank for later on. But it doesn't seem as though they're going to do that. But um, it was a good little promo between Bray and Taker. I didn't mind that at all. Um, Taker, you know, his little long, drawn-out promo that he does, it's still fine, it's okay, and Bray kind of hit back nicely. But yeah, so no announcement on who exactly they're going to have. Then throughout the night, we had the, the qualifying matches. We had... Kevin Owens and Neville, which was fun. That was good. No surprise that uh, Owens won. And uh, we had the other one between Dean Ambrose and Ziggler, which was which was a great match as well. I really enjoyed that one. Um, those guys kind of tore it up. I really thought that one was probably my favorite of the night, I think. Actually, no, no, no. Roman Reigns and Cesaro was my favorite of the night. Um, but uh, Ambrose and Ziggler was good. So no surprise Ambrose won either. I thought... Uh, you know, I, I, it's all signs kind of lead towards an, an Ambrose and Reigns final, but we'll talk about it in a moment. Um, we had Kalisto and Del Rio. Uh, you know, that it was what it was. I think they just wanted to have this match to kind of please their Mexican audience. They're trying to reestablish their Mexican audience a little bit, so they wanted to have this match, I think, to kind of just to have it. I mean, Kalisto is a clear ripoff of Rey Mysterio. It's so blatantly obvious that he's just a complete ripoff of Rey Mysterio, he even looks like the guy, he moves around like the guy, but that's fine, honestly, that's not, it's not a complaint from me, because they do need a guy like Rey Mysterio, and Kalisto is really good, he is really good, so I, to me personally, I would have the Lucha Dragons um, disband and get Kalisto in that um, singles division and really start to push the guy, I think he could really be something, but the thing is, like, you look at Neville, who is a bigger version of Kalisto in a sense, and, you know, they're not doing anything with Neville. So will they do anything with Kalisto? I doubt it. But I think Kalisto has a lot of potential, and they need to kind of satisfy this Mexican audience. That's why they've got Del Rio back. So, I mean, a big Del Rio and Kalisto feud would certainly, um, you know, I'm sure they would enjoy that, and, you know, I think I would probably enjoy that. So I think that might be a decent idea to do down the line. I thought that match was um, okay, but obviously I think they could do a lot better given the time and the the opportunity, and yeah, so it's a nice little teaser of what to perhaps expect in the future, but definitely uh, Kalisto, I I think he has the potential, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be, you know, the next Rey Mysterio in a sense, better than Rey Mysterio or a future world champion, but I think he'd certainly be, you know, a good, you know, presence in the mid-card, upper mid-card area, which is already filled with hundreds of guys, (laughs) it seems as though everybody's in the mid-card of doom at the moment, but, uh, you know, I guess throwing Kalisto in there wouldn't do him any favors, but it's not like the team of the Lucha Dragons is doing Kalisto any favors either. It really feels as though Sin Cara is holding Kalisto back. And, you know, did even have Sin Cara come out ringside with Kalisto in this match? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm... I, to be honest, I wasn't really paying much attention during the match, but it seems as though they're kind of moving Sin Cara a little bit away from Kalisto, slowly and slowly. They're kind of giving Kalisto an opportunity to show himself on his own, which I think is a good thing. A slow transition out. There's no reason why Sin Cara can, can't still be buddies with Kalisto, but I think Kalisto should still be in that singles and start to transition him in, into that one. Since they're not really... It's pretty clear they're not going to really do much for the Lucha Dragons team. That's kind of done. They've, they're not really going to... To give him the tag titles, they're not really going to put him in a big feud. So you may as well break him up or kind of have Kalisto go his separate ways 
and use the guy elsewhere because it's a waste to have him, you know, sitting and catering next to Zack Ryder because I think he's better than that. I think he could certainly add to something, add something to the card, no doubt. And I think a Neville and Kalisto match would be pretty sweet too. So, um, in the final, uh, well, you know, that was the final one, but the, the one before I wanted to talk about the most was Roman Reigns and Cesaro. Now, this match really felt like a big fight feel towards the end, at least. You know, I thought these guys were really, really good. Back and forth, you know, Cesaro, I was thinking for a second, hold on, this guy, you know, holy shit, he could actually win. You know, I, they they worked this match so well that I kind of actually, in the back of my mind, thought, okay, Cesaro, he might have a chance of winning here. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a cool swerve to do? But then I came back to reality and realized that's never going to happen. But uh, great match between the two. And it just goes to show that Cesaro is just a, such a talent. He's fantastic. He's a waste of what they're doing with him. And I'll talk about the whole Cesaro thing when I get to the tournament discussion overall. But uh, he is a real waste doing what he is now. But Roman Reigns certainly held up his own. I think a lot of people need to start giving Roman Reigns some more credit. He has improved leaps and bounds. Even the promo that he did before the match, I actually enjoyed that one. Um, it wasn't long, but it was a bit longer than what he normally does as well. I think a couple of minutes at least, maybe three minutes. But it wasn't bad at all. I actually thought it was pretty good. He got his point across nicely. And I think Roman Reigns, um, slowly, it's taken him a long time, but he's getting good enough where he can cut a couple minute promo where, where it's not terrible. So, uh, which is fine. You know, there's no, you don't have to need the guy to come out and cut 20 minute promos every week, but you can have the guy you know, do a couple minutes and speak for a few minutes and he can hold up his own and he's and he's okay. So that's that's good enough for me. I think he can get away with that for the most for the most time and um yeah, so I think Roman Reigns, a nice little promo from him, just kinda of showing that he's not completely useless on the microphone, he can do a little bit there. So that's good to see that Roman Reigns is still improving a lot. He's got a long, long way to go. He's not exactly you know, look at Triple H's promo last week. It's not exactly Roman Reigns cutting a promo on that kind of level by all means. But, you know, Reigns can certainly do a decent enough promo for a few minutes. And anything longer than that, you can see that it's kind of getting drawn out and it's not, you lose the interest of the viewers. But a few minutes, you can kind of, he can hold the audience for long enough before, you know, you start to get tired of it and, you, and his weaknesses start to show. So I think it was good enough. Short and sweet is the best for Reigns, and I'm glad that they're starting to go along that route. And, uh, you know, look at last year. This time last year, he was cutting fairy tale promos and doing all that crap. So I'm glad he's at least trying to talk and look like a badass. And that's that's a good thing. But, um, yeah, so the matches this week were pretty good. Um, the big thing is in this week's Raw was that the main event was the Divas. And that was a bit of a, sh- a shocker. And to me, I don't think it's really warranted. I don't think these Divas really deserve to have that slot. You know, this is a slot that hasn't been allocated all that often to anybody. But I don't think they really deserve that opportunity. But I think the the thing is, is like, is like what else could have main evented this Raw on the show? The only thing that really screams main event to me was the Brothers versus the Wyatts kind of thing. Or Reigns and Cesaro. So, they kind of wanted to do the Brothers thing to kind of draw the viewer in for the majority of the show. Last week... The ratings didn't exactly, you know, the ratings went down, even though the Brothers of Destruction came out at the end. So ha- perhaps this week they felt as though, all right, we'll try and hook the viewer in by having the Brothers out early on. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not, but that seems as though what I kind of got out of that, that's what their intentions were. And perhaps they're thinking, well, shit, no one watches the third hour of Raw. Perhaps we'll just throw the Divas on at the end. No no one's watching it. So <laughs> maybe that's what they were trying to do there. But uh, it's probably true. You know, no one is watching the third hour of Raw. The ratings of Raw is dipping and dipping and dipping. It's getting really worse. So hopefully they get a, a spike in ratings this week. I, I don't know. I doubt it. There just really isn't that much to kind of get too excited about. I think this is just your regular episode of Raw with a couple of matches had a little bit extra meaning. But... Did we all really kind of expect the results that happened this week in Raw? Yeah. There was no real surprises, was there, in the tournament. The only surprise has been Ryback and Kalista, but even then you kind of got the sense that Kalista might just win just to have that surprise. And by the way, that was a bit of a travesty, honestly, treating Ryback like that. I Some people are kind of divided on the guy. To me, I think he's 
good enough where he can be on the fringe of that main event level. You know, he's not going to be The Rock, he's not going to be Austin, but, you know, he can be, like, a, a big guy that can kind of work and have the occasional big feud up in the main event. There's no need for him to be, you know, in the mid-card doing nothing. I think he can be better than that. I think the crowd reactions for him has certainly died down. The only thing that really gets him a reaction is the chant. So he kind of needs to get over a little bit more and get the crowd, you know, caring about him a little bit more, which is might be, might be why he's kind of dwindled down the card a little bit. You can see that he's kind of slowly faded back down, which is a shame, but um, perhaps that might, might be where he needs to go for a little bit just to kind of improve um, there and kind of get back over with the fans. But um, the thing he did with the Usos this week was pretty cool. I, I like that. So the New Day, of course, great again. You know, every time you talk about the New Day, you have to say the word great. They were good. But even the New Day, it seems as though their kind of love and support is slowly fading away too. Um, the reactions that they're getting is slowly starting to fade away. Perhaps it was just this crowd. But I don't know. Maybe the New Day even themselves, you know, they've been so successful in the last couple of months um, they're not getting overexposed as much as they were at one point. I think they're only getting like one segment a week now, so they're not, you know, on the show too much. But maybe they're not even on the show enough. I, mean, I felt as though the New Day were kind of missing this week. They weren't really all that there. They did a promo before their match, of course, so they did get their time. But uh, I don't know, I just felt as though maybe I want more New Day in my life. Perhaps that's what it is. But, um, yeah, so Raw over Raw. Oh, yeah, the Divas Man of it, I should say. Um, the Divas main event, look, this was not good. This, this promo between Paige and Charlotte was just completely all over the place. I don't know what the hell was going on. One minute, Charlotte's crying, you know, the next minute, you know, she's fine. The next second, she's pissed off. This was just all over the place. And Paige looks as though she had a a flight to catch. She was trying to hurry this hell, hurry this thing up. She's like, all right, stop crying. Let's sign the contract and get out of here. It was just like, what the fuck is going on? You know, they didn't really accomplish anything out of this out of this uh, promo. And the random kind of inclusion of Charlotte's brother, Reed, into the storyline was just odd. It was just like, oh, okay. And you know, all of a sudden, they're kind of bringing that up one week before the pay-per-view. Maybe a few weeks ago, that could have worked. But it was kind of random. And, you know, I'm hearing some controversy online about the the line that Paige used, I'm not can't quote the line, but you know, it was Paige taking a shot at you know Reed against you know using it against Charlotte, whatever it was. But you guys, you know, you guys watched it, you know what it was. But um, I'm hearing a lot of controversy about that, and it's kind of ridiculous. I thought that was the only good thing about the promo. I thought that was the only thing good about the segment. It was the only thing that I went, oh shit, yeah, all right. And then they had a brawl at the end, which was good. I, I, that was fine. Um, that was the only part of the segment that I liked. And some people are complaining online that a slight little bit of edginess, a slight little bit of you know attitude that we've seen in the past, a little bit of controversy, people on Twitter are complaining. I read all these tweets that I'm just face palming, wondering what the hell. We see it every single week. Oh, the WWE needs more attitude. It needs to be more controversial. It's too PG. And they bring out a slight little element. Not even that big of a deal. Let's be honest. This is a work. You think that was a shoot? No. This was a work. You know, Ric Flair was okay with it. Ric Flair's old school. He thought, oh, yeah, old school heat. Sure, let's do it. Charlotte, she probably obliged. Said, okay, whatever. My dad's okay with it. I'm okay with it. So they were all in on it. So with they're okay with it, why should the fans be in an uproar saying, oh my god, that's disgusting, these are the tweets, these are some of the tweets I'm seeing, that was disgusting, that was in poor taste, I couldn't believe the WWE was doing that, that's terrible, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, the the slight little bit of attitude, the slight bit of edginess, and people complaining, you're in an uproar, are we in that, is society that much politically correct that if somebody says something a little bit out of line, that we cry about it on Twitter. I mean, what is going on with the world? I thought it was great. I thought, like I said, it was the only redeeming value of that whole segment. That was the only thing that went, shit, that was good. All right, yeah, cool. And so when they had the brawl after it, to me, I'm like, yeah, Charlotte, kick kick Paige's ass. You know, I was cheering on Charlotte. I wanted her to beat Paige up after what she said. The line worked perfectly because the brawl made sense. You know, Charlotte snapping, and now at the pay-per-view, you're going to have Charlotte even more emotionally invested and more motivated to beat 
page. So in the end, the line that was used works out fine. But for some reason, the politically correct society that we're in, everyone was complaining. And I just, I can't understand why. Like I said, it was the only thing I liked about it. So if anything, I think the WWE needs to do more of this kind of thing. More of these things are like, oh shit, you know, get you thinking, going, oh wow, okay, wow, I can't believe she said that kind of thing, rather than, oh yeah, okay. It could have been like this. Paige could have been like, yeah, well, we're no longer friends, but at Survivor Series, you know, I'm going to prove that I'm better than you, and yeah, I'm going to be the next Divas Champion and walk away, you know, and Charlotte could be like, no, no, I'm going to be the next Divas, I'm still going to retain my Divas Championship, I'm better than you, and they have a little bit of a brawl about it, you know, that would have been boring, that's like the normal thing that you get every week, but when there's a slight little bit of edginess to it, the fans are in an uproar, I don't know, let me know in the comment section down below, what did you guys think about that line? What did you guys think about the segment overall? To me, I thought the overall segment was terrible. It was just too all over the place. You know, it was just all... And just just odd and random. I didn't get it. And the fact that it main evented a Raw, I don't think this feud really warranted it. Now, to, to be fair, looking at the promo packages that they did, showcasing all the things that's happened in the last four months, I thought, okay, yeah, this is a bit of a big feud in, in a sense. If I just watch those video packages only... I would have said, yeah, this is a pretty big deal. But after watching every single Raw for the past four months, to my to me, I feel as though this is garbage. Because, yes, you highlight the only good things that's happened in the last four months. This feud looks good. But when you watch every single week, you're going, this feud is terrible. <laughs> and like I said, you know, this was the this is a, a poorly done segment. And I just don't feel as though this feud really warranted to have that final slot, especially considering the Divas have had to work so hard throughout the years to even get that spot. So to have that allocated to this, I just don't think it was really worth it. And I think they're trying to, to kind of build the hype for this match because we still don't have a confirmed tag team title match, I assume. I'm guessing on SmackDown, they'll announce that it's going to be the New Day and the Usos in a tag match. I'm just guessing there. Um... So we don't have that many matches to hype up. So I guess, you know, once the tournament's kind of put aside, which isn't really completed yet, you can't really have a, a heated rivalry between your semi-final opponents because they can have a match and then, you know, it's all about the final. So you can't really do too much there with it. So I get why it got that slot, but I just feel as though it didn't really warrant it. And, uh, you know, the, the feud, it's okay. Like, it's not terrible. Like like I said, if you look at the the... The highlights over the last four months, it's look, it looks good. It looks okay. But after watching it week to week, when Paige, one week, she hates PCB. The next week, she's with them again. The next week, she's thinking about quitting again. Then the next week, she turns on them. It's just all over the place. It's just, you know, I don't know. Someone just, just has, just can't make up their mind. You know, every single week, they're changing their mind about Paige. And it's just hard to kind of get invested into the rivalry. But... I thought the closure of that segment was good, like I said, but the you know the, the promos, the back and forth talking was terrible, and Paige on the mic is is awful. Charlotte was pretty good; she was okay, but Paige, just her on the mic is just obnoxious and just doesn't come across good at all. She just feels like I don't know; she feels like a little teenager, just like a little spoiled brat. I, I don't know. I get that's the gimmick or whatever, but it's just. It just doesn't work very well. I just don't think it's working. So they need to tweak that character a little bit, in my opinion. You know, they they talked about how Paige was this British, you know, badass. Well, why is she no longer that? You know, why as soon as she turns heel, she's just chicken shit, whiny, bratty heel? Why can't she be, you know, this British badass like pa- uh, Charlotte said? Why can't she be someone who's going to walk out there, talk some shit, and kick your ass while she's doing it? You know, instead, she's going to, you know, talk some shit from afar and, you know, be a whiny bitch about it. I don't know. I, why, that's the thing. Like, every heel in the WWE, they have to be, you know, scared. You know, have to kind of walk away or, you know, be a chicken shit. Like, it's enough of that. We need some different types of heels. I think that's another issue. And that's another issue for another podcast. But that's another issue that they really need to kind of address there. But overall, this week's Raw, honestly, was okay at best. It wasn't that great. Nothing really memorable about it. And, um, you know, Survivor Series, did it help me build up the hype and excitement for it? Um, not really. I mean, the Brothers of Destruction match, I'm looking forward to seeing The Undertaker again. I just think him seeing him is always fun. So I'm kind of intrigued about that one. 
And the rest of it, I think, is pretty predictable where it's going. Um, I think the Divas match could go either way, to be honest. But, you know, I think the tournament's pretty predictable. The only real question is what's going to happen in the finish of the tournament. But I think the finalist is pretty predictable. And I guess we'll kind of segue into the Survivor Series card now. So we'll talk about the first matchup, the Brothers of Destruction versus the Wyatt family. Now... Like I said, I think I'm very disappointed that I didn't make this a traditional elimination tag match. If any of the matches on the card could have been that, it's obviously this one. Nothing else really would make sense, and if they did another one now, if they just had to have an elimination tag match on there, then it would just be, you know, short build-up and wouldn't be really worth it. But a Brothers of Destruction versus the Wyatt Family matchup, 4-4 four and four would have been really good. I thought that's a missed opportunity there. Instead, we're having two of the Wyatt family members, you know, compete against the brothers. Like I said, you could have easily put the Dudley boys in there, in my opinion, and kind of done that. You know, I get that they have Randy Orton's no longer there, and they and they had to do the tournament matchup as well. So I get that they had to kind of change plans there. But um, yeah, it's a little disappointing that we're not seeing a uh, a five and five, or at least a four and four. So that's disappointing. So I think the uh, I think the Wyatt family will win this match. I think Kane will take the pin. You know, perhaps they didn't want to have an elimination tag match so they can have Kane take the pin. So I think it's going to be Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt teaming up. I think Bray Wyatt will get his ass kicked, then then, Bray, then Braun Strowman will come in and beat the shit out of Kane. To me, Braun is like a new version of Kane. You know, he's he's huge and he's just ha- he's just physically imposing. Um, early Kane wasn't a big talker, and obviously Braun won't be either. But um. It, to me, I can just see so many comparisons between the two, and I think it's good that we have a replacement for Kane. I think Kane is on his way out, probably in the next year or two. He probably will be finished up, so it's good to have a guy who can replace that big monster. And I think they're obviously in their mind, Braun Strowman's going to be the man, so they're going to really invest a lot of time into making this guy into something, which I think is a good thing. I think Braun, you know, like I said, has the has the size, and you know, he is physically imposing and. You look at the guy and you go, oh shit, this guy means business, which is something that can't be said about many guys in the WWE right now. So I think Braun has the look, which will certainly help him out, and I think the WWE will probably have this guy really be pushed to the moon. Maybe they'll have him do a Kane one-on-one matchup and beat the shit out of Kane again. I don't know, but I think the way I see it, if it's not an elimination tag match, which I don't think it is, then it'll be Kane taking the pin, obviously protecting Undertaker. Um... Kane will probably work majority of the match. Uh, Undertaker will get tagged in towards the end. And then, you know, clear house, and then he'll tag Kane back in. And maybe the Wyatt family will distract um, Kane, or, you know, Undertaker will get beat up outside the ring, and the referees can't see it, or something like that. And, and Kane will get, you know, taken out. It's, you know, your typical kind of tag team match finish, let's be real. So I expect that to go down, which will be a little disappointing. But like I said, I think this match could have been a lot better if it had the 4-on-4 four four element to it. But I get it. They just want to do the straight-up brothers, the, the darkness guys versus the new faces of the darkness. I get that. Which would have been cool if Sting was around, you know, if he was you know healthy or they wanted to use him. We could have you know inserted Sting into that, which would have been pretty cool, but uh, I guess not. But, um, yeah, so I expect the Wyatt family to win. I think it'll be a waste if the brothers win. I mean, let's be real. The Wyatt family, they're going to be around for the next 10 years, you know, maybe not as a group, but they're going to be around for a lot longer, at least in the next couple of years as a group. Kane and The Undertaker, this is going to probably be the last time they team up ever as the Brothers of Destruction. They should do the honors. They should put over the Wyatt family. And to be honest, they should just do it clean. You know, what, is the, what does Kane and Undertaker have to lose if they lose clean here? Nothing. Undertaker is going into the Hall of Fame. Kane's going into the Hall of Fame. Their, their careers are winding down. They are legends. The Wyatt family, it seems as though they can't buy a win at this point. Bray Wyatt, he can't beat anyone. So it would be nice if you had Bray Wyatt, you know, pin taker, pin Kane, beat these guys, and, you know, you can establish this stable as, holy shit, these guys beat the, the Brothers of Destruction. These guys mean business. So, for me, any other decision other than the Wyatt family victory would be idiotic to me. All right, so Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens in the semifinal. Uh, to me, it's pretty obvious Dean Ambrose is going to win. This, is, this should be a really good matchup. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. There's not a lot of matches on the card. 
So some of these matches might get allocated a lot more time. I guess as well, you, you know, looking at the card now, you can't, you have to factor in that there'll be an extra match uh, added on with the, the final of the tournament. So I guess I need to factor that in. But to me, Dean Ambrose wins. Um, Roman Reigns and Del Rio, to me, Roman Reigns will win. How those matches will go down, I don't think Kevin Owens loses clean. I think Ambrose just scrapes through, whereas Del Rio's taking a spear. Del Rio's getting the Superman punch and hit, getting hit by that spear straight after. So um, Then you'll have Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose in the final. We'll talk more about that in a second. The Divas Championship matchup, Charlotte versus Paige. This one could go either way to me. I personally think Charlotte as a champion has been very lackluster. And if it were me, I would probably get the belt on Paige. Now, after the promo that Paige did on Raw, I'd probably be more inclined to give it to Charlotte again. And, you know, because Paige is just terrible. But for the sake of the storyline, for the sake of, you know, interest in the, in the division, I think Paige has to win it. That way you can include Becky Lynch into the storyline, have her chase Paige, and you can have Charlotte go after it again. Perhaps she'll have... You know, Lynch and Charlotte teaming up against Paige. I'm not sure, but for the sake of the storyline, it makes more sense if Paige uh, gets the belt again, I think for the third time in her career. So, And then I guess you can get him away from the PCB thing, and you can obviously turn Sasha Banks babyface. And, you know, she's really a babyface by the fans, but uh, in the WWE world, you know, she's still a heel. You get her face and perhaps, you know, build towards Paige versus Sasha Banks, Maybe at WrestleMania, maybe that might be too far away, but it's not that far away, is it? But, you know, in WWE world, that's, you know, years away. So, we'll see. But, um, to me, I think that would be, I think the plan overall would, it has to be Sasha Banks getting the belt at some point. So, you probably want to turn Sasha face, have her against Paige, rather than have her against Charlotte. You'd rather, I think we'd rather see Sasha as a face rather than a heel. But anyways, for this match, Paige, for me, wins the belt. And they you know, probably do another rematch at TLC or something, and they might finish up the feud there. And you might get Becky Lynch involved. Maybe you do Paige versus Becky Lynch for the title at one point. Start to build Becky Lynch up a little bit, which would be good to see. Give her a bit of an opportunity to kind of show us what she can do because she hasn't had a chance at all. So that's a few options that they can really take. I guess uh, the New Davis, the Usos tag team match. New Day will win that if that if that is official. I'm not sure yet. I expect that to probably be announced on SmackDown. If that is official, I think the New Day will win by Xavier Woods getting himself involved and screwing over the Usos, setting up a rematch at TLC where probably a, a ladder match or something for the tag titles, and I think the New Day will probably lose the belts there to the Usos. Alrighty, so the main event matchup, uh, in my opinion, Ambrose and Reigns one-on-one. The question is, who's turning? Someone's turning heel. If it doesn't, if nobody turns heel, they shake hands at the end, and Dean Ambrose is raising Roman Reigns' arm in the air, smiling, then I will be absolutely furious. Somebody has to turn heel. For me, I said last week, Roman Reigns should turn. For me, that's the right decision. But I get the feeling that, I don't know, Dean Ambrose might just do it. I know there was a big rumor and everyone was kind of freaking out when Triple H said in his interview with Michael Cole that someone has to be crazy enough to take my offer. Everyone's kind of freaking out. Oh shit, it's going to be Ambrose. I don't did they show a segment where Ambrose was talking to Triple H? I don't think so. So that might be kind of playing on that a little bit more, keeping it secretive. I don't know. But to me, I would have Roman Reigns turn heel. Reigns, as the authority champion, wears the suit, puts the hair up, comes out with the gold around his waist, looking a million bucks, just screams perfection. Just screams Roman Reigns. It works. It would make more sense. Ambrose turning heel. No. I mean, what I would probably do is I'd have Roman Reigns, you know, take out Ambrose and just do what he has to do in the name of the title. You know, he was willing to put his friendship with Ambrose aside and this brotherhood with, with Roman Reigns aside for the belt. And he's willing to sell out to be a champion. And he's willing to go along with Triple H and, and screw over Dean Ambrose for the name of the title. You know, and why should Dean Ambrose win the title over Roman Reigns? Could be that kind of thing. Like, I should be champion. I don't know. Yes, I wanted to do things right, but I've realized that I, I deserved this title. And, you know, I don't know, but... The thing is, like, they're doing the whole teaser last week kind of ruined the whole potential there 
a little bit. So I'm not exactly 100% sure how I would kind of fix that stigma. I mean, they can just kind of ignore it, just do the swerve anyway. No, I don't want to be with the authority. Come Survivor Series, here he is, I'm with the authority. That could happen. But I guess you'd be kind of wondering, oh, why did they do that? What was the point of the the declining of it and making him go through the whole tournament if he's going to join the authority anyways? That's kind of the loophole in the story there. So they need to kind of patch that up if this is the decision to go with. But I just get the feeling that they're so set on Roman Reigns being the top babyface that they might just keep Reigns there and they might force an Ambrose heel turn, which I don't think anybody wants to boo Dean Ambrose. Mind you, Roman Reigns' reactions are getting better. He's doing a lot better the last few weeks, last few months, I should say. He's doing a lot better for himself. But why would they try and force Ambrose as a heel to favor Roman Reigns? That is going to be a recipe for disaster. I think the fans, whilst they've cooled off Dean Ambrose a little bit, have been a much more of a favor of a Dean Ambrose uh, in the last year or so. So, um, so for me, like I said, Reigns to win the belt, join the authority, and turn heel on Dean Ambrose, takes out Ambrose after the match, Shakes, hand with, shakes hands with Triple H, signifying the, the Roman Reigns era. And uh, that'll be the beginning of Roman Reigns. That way, you can also set up some big matches down the line. You could have, you know, Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns, the former authority figure guy, authority, authority guy versus the new authority guy. That's, an, that's a storyline that writes itself. You could have Daniel Bryan come back as a babyface and versus Roman Reigns. You could have John Cena as the, you know, the great savior of the world and, and God Himself in the WWE's eyes come back and and you know have a match against Roman Reigns. You could do all these things. I mean, I know The Rock's kind of out at the moment. He's you know WrestleMania. He's been ruled out of that. But a Rock versus Roman Reigns match, a heel Roman Reigns versus The Rock would be an option. You could have all these different you know options. Whereas. You know, to me, a Dean Ambrose as a heel, you just kind of get the whole Roman Reigns feud done. Roman Reigns will beat Ambrose anyways and just win the belt. And regardless, you know, I think even if Roman Reigns... I think if Ambrose turns heel, this is what will happen. Reigns will win the match, and Reigns will try and shake hands and celebrate with Ambrose, and Ambrose will attack Reigns afterwards. Ambrose won't win the belt regardless. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. Roman Reigns is walking out as the champion. There's no way that Ambrose is going to walk out as champion. So either way, you're going to get Roman Reigns as a champion. It's either going to be, is he a babyface or is he heel? And who's he feuding with? You know, is he going to do the feud with Ambrose? If yes, is he going to be face or heel? So for me, like I said, to sum it up, Reigns wins, Reigns heel, Reigns authority, go from there. And that's really the Survivor Series wrap-up. There's not really much more to say about the pay-per-view. Um, looking forward to it to a certain degree. I'm hoping, hoping a few twists and turns happen. It seems very predictable at the moment, which is kind of the problem with the, with the tournament. And to me, just another final note, now to my mind, another final note is that to me, I think they did a poor job with the tournament overall in the in the matchup. Cesaro getting beat in the quarterfinals against Roman Reigns was a bad decision. To me, Cesaro should have been the guy that kind of, oh shit, this guy, he's getting really close. You know, get him to the semifinals, if not even the final. You know, obviously they have the Ambrose and Reigns storyline, but if it was a different circumstance, Cesaro should have been in that final because, to me, in a in a tournament, you want that one guy that surprises everyone. I know they did a small little surprise to Kalisto, but not really a big deal. But if you had Cesaro, let's say he was versing Del Rio rather than Kalisto, so Cesaro beats Ryback, oh shit, okay. Cesaro beats Del Rio, oh okay. Then Cesaro gets so so close, but can't quite beat, you know. A Roman Reigns in the semi-finals, or a, a Dean Ambrose. You probably may, you're probably better off with Dean Ambrose, maybe. I mean, he gets so close, but just can't get it done. But instead, now you've got, you know, you, you, Cesaro's out early. To me, the fight, the, 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 one of these tournaments, you know, when you do a tournament like this, it's such an easy way to establish someone. It's such an easy way of building a new star. Maybe not a new mega star or anything like that, but you get more eyes on people and you start to take someone more seriously. And someone like Cesaro, who's been struggling for such a long time to get the wins under his belt, you know, you're looking at his character-wise, you don't really take him as, you, you know he's good, but you don't really take him as a big threat to win the match overall. So if you started getting him some big wins in, in a tournament, but come close, but just not 
far enough. He puts on a hell of a performance. Let's say he does this five-star match of Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose at the pay-per-view. Everyone's going to go, oh, shit, this guy is good. This guy means business. And I think that's a way to kind of get more crowd reaction towards uh, Cesaro rather than having him beat out in the in the quarterfinals. Now you have a Del Rio in there. Eh, whatever. Who cares? And you've got Kevin Owens in there, which is good. He should be there. But I just feel as though those guys, very predictable. I think we all kind of expected them to be there. It probably would have been better if they tried to establish someone else in that position and have someone uh, work that up, work, you know, become a, a more notable name after the tournament. Unfortunately, just they just didn't do that. So that's my only real concern with the way they've done the tournament overall. Alrighty, so we have a few questions we're going to answer this week before we close out the show. So let's go ahead and get into your questions this week. Of course, you can leave a question on the forums at brendanplace.com forward slash forums or by leaving a comment in the YouTube comment section on this video or a voicemail on the website as well. Alrighty, so our first question is going to come from Edgar. wants to know, who is the most underappreciated worker in the main roster? Now, I can think of a few names. Um, for starters, obviously, we've talked about a lot. Cesaro, fantastic uh, Dolph Ziggler, uh, Damien Sandow, Neville, um, other, other guys. Uh, I think Dean Ambrose is certainly underappreciated. I don't think they really get enough out of him. I think he could be a much bigger name if they really gave him the chance. It just seems as though when they feel like it, yeah, we'll throw Ambrose out there, but he should be a guy that should be a focal point of the show all the time. But they just kind of use him when you know the other top names are out. So he's certainly very underappreciated as well so there's a few other guys probably but uh those are the first few guys that come off the top of my head this one comes from 37 will dog do you think it's possible that Seamus could fail his money in the bank cash and god i hope so since he has lost so much momentum and is basically a glorified jobber now well the guy is now in the tag division he's been teaming up with bad news barrett so that's also a recipe for disaster associating yourself with that guy uh, Sheamus, he has zero momentum, and him as a world champion would be an absolute disaster. I think the WWE know that themselves. To me, I know I've kind of dick ride Cesaro this podcast, but I would have Cesaro beat Sheamus for the title. And that way you can really, you know, he's a guy that the crowd would actually get behind. I don't think anybody at all, you know, okay, last week I got in trouble for saying I don't think, I think nobody likes someone. I think the majority of people don't like Sheamus and don't want to see him as a champion. So for me personally, I am definitely one of them. I don't want to see Sheamus anywhere near the belt. I don't even want Sheamus to look at the belt, touch the belt, be within a 20-mile radius of the belt. Well, that's not going to be a 20-meter radius of the belt. I don't want him to be anywhere near the freaking thing. So him as a champion, to me, would be disastrous. And they already have enough problems as it is of their ratings you think Sheamus is going to be a rating solver? The guy hasn't drawn a dime in his life. The guy is, you know, even when he was a big baby face, you could tell they were just an Irish John Cena who just wasn't interesting. You know, got a good reaction here and there, but never really has put on these great matches that make you go, fuck yeah, let's see Sheamus tonight. I don't think he's really sold a ticket himself. I don't think anybody's going, yes, I have to go take the family to see Sheamus tonight. I don't think anybody cares about the guy. So him as a champion... I think the certainly the uh, the house shows would be well down in my opinion. The ratings would drop, and his merchandise never moves much at all. So I think all the signs kind of lead towards the guy not getting the the, the title. I don't know how they're going to get out of it. I don't see them, you know, having Sheamus lose the money in the bank briefcase because they're so high on Sheamus. Sheamus for whatever reason. So the way I see it, they might just have you know Sheamus run out of time. Like he keeps trying to cash in and. You know, he just can't get it done. And then he tries to cash in on the night of money in the bank. And, you know, he, the, he just can't do it. And he runs out of time. Something like that. Something different as well. I would actually like to see that. Someone run out of time. They've waited too long and it becomes a storyline. Like, when's he going to cash in? He's running out of time. And he finally tries to cash in, like, you know, every week for the last couple of weeks until money in the bank. And, you know, he just, for whatever reason, can't get it. And then on the night of money in the bank after... Let's say I don't know. Let's say Roman Reigns is champion. Roman Reigns wins his t- win- wins his match, but Sheamus comes to try and cash in, but Reigns escapes somehow, and Sheamus can't cash in, 
and he's left stranded. He can't, you know, the, the, the contract, the one-year contract expires. And the person who now has money in the bank who won that night is now the money in the bank holder. Seamus has lost his right to cash it in. So that's what I would like to see. If they, if that's the, the plan not to give him the, the, uh, the title, that might be a way to get out of it. Next up comes from Callum Burgess. Do you think, do you believe the ratings will drop over the disappearance of Seth Rollins, or will a new face of the company improve the ratings by the slightest? No, I don't think so. I think if honestly Seth Rollins, I don't think he was a real ratings drawer. I don't think he was a big draw because the house attendance has been, you know, on the decline and ratings has been declining over the course of the year. I don't think any particular champion is a draw. Or any particular wrestler these days is a draw rather than, you know, except for like a Lesnar or perhaps an Undertaker. Um, I think the WWE brand is the draw, and if the overall show is not good quality, then people aren't going to watch. If the overall card doesn't look like a good show, then people aren't going to watch. If there's a one big match on the card that people will want to see, then they will watch. But for the most part, you know, it's a whole collective effort to, to determine the ratings. And I don't think Seth Rollins was really a ratings pusher. When he was champion, the ratings have been very, very low. So if anything... Someone like a Reigns, you know, maybe they'll give Cena the belt back. I don't know. But someone else's champion might improve the ratings. Next up comes from Cameron. He wants to know, so he has a, a question. How hard is it to decide what matches go in what spot in universe mode? So how do you decide the main event? Not very hard at all. I like to, to mix it up on occasion. Obviously, the main event is the, the top match of the show. So let's see. We had, um, well... What was last week's main event? We had the Randy Orton and uh, Sheamus match. No, Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan match, I should say. So we had that one. So obviously that's one of the, the marquee storylines, the Daniel Bryan and Sheamus storyline. Two big names. So obviously main event talent are going to get that main event spot. On occasion, I'll switch it up. I might put the IC or the US title in that kind of slot just to kind of switch it up quite rarely. But um, it's not very difficult to decide the order. If anything, I kind of like to... Normally I kind of kick it off with a tag match or you know a big match to kind of kick it off and then a, you know the second match might be you know the mid card or a divas match it's just kind of random the way i do it there's no real particular order that i do it in i just kind of do it whatever whatever match comes to mind the last two matches are generally the bigger matches of the show um you know if not you know i might do the first match is a big match and the last match is a big match that's sometimes what i do but there's no real particular order the main event is always you know I try to spice it. The one thing that I have trouble with, and this is probably perhaps the WWE themselves have trouble with, is you know getting unique matchups to correlate with the the rivalry in place. Like I don't want to have random matches. Like I don't want to have you know Dean Ambrose versus uh, Bad News Barrett because you know who cares about that? I want to have interesting matchups. You know without kind of you know blowing away any potential big matches in the future. So that's kind of the challenge to creating interesting matches every week, but I think I do an okay job at it. Sometimes it is a little bit repetitive. You know, I might just kind of do the same match and change the guys around on occasion, but I think for the most part, I get away with it most times and keep things relatively fresh and relatively exciting. At least that's the what I like to think. I don't know what you guys think, but I try. I try to make it as good as I possibly can. Finally, this one comes from the Bacos. After Ryback losing in round one against Kalisto in the, in the title tournament, do I believe he'll bounce back or has the WWE dropped the ball on him? I think he can bounce back, let's be honest. I think the guy still has enough there to kind of get himself back in a prominent position. I just feel as though other guys are way ahead of him now. Like a couple years ago, he was really their only choice. Now you've established Reigns, Ambrose, Rollins. Uh, you've established Kevin Owens. You've got these other guys ahead of him. Del Rio's back. He's probably ahead of him now. So there's a few guys ahead of Ryback. And they're kind of focusing on these other guys, whereas Ryback just has to take a back seat for a little bit. A little bit like the Dudley boys. You know, they've taken a back seat as well because the Usos are back. And the big focus is on the New Day. So in other situations, if this was a year ago, the Dudley boys would have the titles right now and be, you know, flying high. But for whatever reason, you know, they're focusing on these other teams. So these other, So these guys just have to kind of, you know, be on the back burner a little bit and kind of wait their turn. And I guess Ryback is in that similar circumstance. His IC title was a bit lackluster because he was played with injury. And when he came back, I just felt as though Owens and Ryback didn't really mesh all that well together, didn't put on a great performance. It was okay, but nothing really special there. So perhaps they figured, all right, we'll get the title off Ryback, we'll move towards Kevin Owens and try and establish him a little bit more as a 
one of the top heels. And I think right now that's probably the right decision that they made. I think they're okay in the babyface department, but certainly in the heel department, they need some bigger names. So someone like Kevin Owens should certainly be in that top position, and I guess Del Rio's there as well. So I think Ryback just has to kind of wait his turn, and I think his turn will come. I don't know if he'll ever be a champion of, of the world, but... Uh, I think he'll certainly be a prominent figure in that upper mid card. And like I said, be on the lower fringe of that main event. You know, the guy can just hang around. He can work the odd main event feud here and there. He's believable enough to be there. That's where I would put him. I wouldn't push him as a top guy, top baby face. No, no, no. I would push him as that, you know, that guy who can do the odd big main event story. I'd be like Kane for the last, you know, few years, like the last 10 years. You know, he's a guy... You could throw him in the mix and you you would believe it. Like, you wouldn't be like, well, this guy's out of place. You could throw him in there and you'd be like, all right, he's not going to win, but I can see why he's there. That's the way I would probably have Ryback in that lower tier main event slot, if not upper mid card kind of guy. So, yeah. Alrighty, guys, that is going to do it for this week's edition of Let's Talk Tuesdays. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like on the video and also a rating on your different platforms. Of course, we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, of course, YouTube. So go and leave a rating and some comments would be definitely appreciated as well. Please leave some questions. We kind of hit down on the questions in the last few weeks. So make sure you leave a question, whatever it's about, leave it in the comment section down below or over at the forums. We only had the one voicemail this week, but it was a little bit of a it was a voicemail regarding extreme rules, which is obviously out of date now. So we need some voicemails as well. So if you have a question, why not leave it in a voicemail? You know, a little bit more personal, just just a suggestion. You can do that on the website, brendanplace.com. Also check out the website as well to kind of stay up to date with everything to do with the universe mode. And uh, I'm going to be doing the payback kind of page and kind of putting that together and kind of updating all the all the things like the title. Uh, the championships and everything like that, and everything like that. I need to put put together the uh, the roster pages as well for Universe Mode. So that's kind of my my job. The next probably the next month when I've got this break, I'm going to really go hard and try and improve the website and just kind of producing some more content and keep everything keeping everything up to date. So I'm going to be pretty busy there. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Let's Talk Tuesdays. I hope you all have a great week. I know it's been a bit of a sad week with. Uh, everything that's going on but hopefully things turn around for anyone that's been affected and i hope you guys enjoy your week and uh, i know i'm going to be a bit busy later on i've got an exam tomorrow and uh and uh moving out in the weekend so i'll let you guys know how it all goes down and uh, i'll let you guys know what's going on and uh next week we'll be back with uh more let's talk tuesdays talking about survivor series and all the fallout from that so guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next tuesday